We thank you, Lord. We honor you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that the entrance of your word brings light and gives understanding to the simple. So, Father, the entrance of your word, Lord, let it give us light this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Illuminate our heart and mind as we engage in your word. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I started a series last week called Blueprints for Successful Living. And the first series, the first title was Understanding the Way of Wisdom. And we try to define what wisdom is and to also understand what are the benefits of wisdom and to also record, uh, mention that we will focus primarily on the book of Proverbs. Uh, the videos are there for us to watch, so I'm not going to uh, uh, go over that again. I want to move very quickly to series number two. And the second series, the title, the subtitle is Living by Choice, Not by Chance. Blueprints for Successful Living, that's the entire series. Series number two, living by choice, not by chance. Many people live their lives by chance. When we were young and we had to make choices, we would close our eyes and do like this and move around and then whatever your finger lands on, that's your decision, that's your choice. Where well, Paul declares that when I was young, I acted and thought like a young, like, like, a, like a child. But when I grew up, I put away childish things. And any adult still doing that, I think, I think they need to put away childish things. But when people try to live by chance, there are circumstances that also uh, lead to that. So we're going to be looking very quickly today. How can we make the intentional choice uh, or decision to live by choice, not by chance, regardless of the circumstances that are overwhelming around us? Jesus told a parable, the parable of the talents is Matthew 25, 14 to 29. Jesus talked about a, a master calling his servants and giving them talents, three of them. One was given five talents. Another one was given two talents. And one was given just one talent. Let me also tell you that talents in those days, they will be equivalent of uh, thousands of dollars today. So I want to look at that talent as a very symbolic presentation or representation of the value of what they were given. One was given five. Two and one, according to their gifts and the grace. In other words, the master recognized that they are not diff that they are different. People don't have the same skills. People don't have the same wisdom, understanding. But the important thing is, regardless of the skills and the understanding, everyone got something. Not one was left out. So one had five because the master knew that he had the capacity to use five. And guess what? He used all five. When the master came and said, yeah, you gave me five talents, I traded them with the talents and I gained five more. The master in his judgment knew what he was doing. And the, the servant did not disappoint. The one with two, traded them with the two and he came back and said, you know what? You gave me two talents, I traded them with the talent and I got two more. And the master said, well done, faithful and just servant. Remember what I said? That was, like I've always said is there's not one person that is the same. Every fingerprint, no two fingerprints are the same. No two people are the same. Even when they are twins born from the same womb on the same day, about the same time, they are uniquely different to realize that each person that God has created is as we create fearfully and wonderfully made. God has not created a carbon copy or photocopy. copy. God has created you original and He has wired you with a measure of grace, a measure of talent, a measure, and then He has a life before you. For I know the plans that I have towards you, says the Lord, the plans of good, not of evil, to give me a future 
I know. How come many never leave that future? How come many never leave that hope? How come the prophecies are never fulfilled? How come the promises are never manifested? So the one with five, trade them with five and got more. The one with two, trade them with two and got more. The one with one, what did he do? You know the story very well. I know you are a hard man, he says to the master, and a shrewd businessman. Well, but that's even the more reason why you should have put his money to use. If it's a shrewd business, people don't become shrewd for nothing. I know you are a hard man. And a true businessman, you harvest where you haven't sown and gather where you haven't scattered seed. I was afraid. Fear kills many people faster yeah. than the sword. I was afraid and went out and hid your talent in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. The master said, You wicked. Lazy servant. You should have at least put my money in the bank so that I will have earned interest. Then he announced, take the talent from that man and give it to the one who has taken and throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness. Uh, do you now wonder why the rich get rich? I'm talking about a the good success, not 419 and uh, all this uh, thief that we have around. Yeah. The Bible talks about this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein to observe all that is written day and night. Then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and have good success. So when I talk of success, I'm talking of good success in alignment with the word of God. Not those who have killed other people to get rich. Not those who have, who have, who have, who have, uh, who have done many terrible things to climb the ladder at all costs. Yeah. We are talking of good success and in alignment with the word and the blessing of God. Now, from him that has just one was given to him that has ten. Mm -hmm. I have a book on my share by Jim Collins. From good to great. How some companies move from being good companies to great companies. It's not enough to be good. How do you move from good to great? It will cost you many things. It will cost you sleepless nights. It will cost you, cost you prayer and fasting. It will cost you resources and everything. But at the end of the day, if you groan, there are women today who have refused to have children because they don't want to experience childbirth labor. And you can, if you don't explain child back labor, you cannot know the joy of bringing forth a new life. Hallelujah. Give or take. Amen? Amen. Now, this is the question What did this servant do that was so wrong? After all, he didn't steal the master's money, he didn't spend it, he didn't invest it foolishly. He kept every penny of the talent that was given to him. What did he do that was wrong? What he did that was wrong was because he did nothing with the talent. He was given an opportunity to do something and he did nothing. And that, believe it or not, was sinful to the master. See if we know that Jesus could recant or could tell that parable. So maybe, just maybe, the servant was intimidated by the fact that the other servants were giving more money. Well, you know, if I trade with one, I only get two. It's just barely, barely scratching the surface. But he had forgotten the principle of sowing and reaping. You cannot reap more than you have sowed. The measure you have read is the same measure multiplied unto you as harvest. So maybe it was intimidated the one with a ten or two. Just maybe it was thinking of greater responsibility. Or just maybe he doubted his own ability to manage such a large sum of money. Mm -hmm. 
You know why God, many times people, before he blesses them, he will lead them. God does not bless you overnight. Like he won a lottery. That's not the principle of God. The principle of God is the principle of growth. One step after another. It takes you, if you are faithful in there, something small, it gives you the next thing, gives you the next thing. Suddenly you look back, you see how far you have come. That's how God, that's why when many people have won lottery, they are worse off. They, some people cost the day, they won that lottery. Because they begin to do things that they have never done before. They thought they have the resources and their life goes down, even when they have won lottery. And here you have people, hey, I wish I could just win just a little bit. Just maybe he was too busy with other things to take the, the time to manage what has been given. We're going to be talking about that this morning. Time management. Regardless of whatever excuses he may have. I tell you what the wicked and lazy servant should have done. What he should have done, he should have taken charge, he should have taken opportunity of the situation that presented itself. This man, hey, you think only one talent, I'm only good for one talent? Okay, I will do so hard. I will work so hard. And I will pray so hard that I will almost outperform even the ones that have two or three talents. That's the right mentality to have. Maybe he was hungry. Look at you calling me. I know you are a hard man. You are a shrewd man. So it's indicting the master. We are rising, you should have looked in was. If you think I'm only worthy to have one talent, I'm gonna promise himself I will work so hard, so relentlessly, so that when he comes, say, wow, I gave you one talent, you got four. Take all four, go and work with it. I have worked with an organization before. We give small scale, small, small scale loans. 500 an hour, one thousand no, dollars, one thousand dollars. We say, well, this is not a gift. This is a loan. Due in 12 months. Hey, 12 months. Yeah, that's it. Interest-free loan. Guess what? Some will come back after 12 months. Oh, God, this is your money. How much profit you have made? Oh, God, I made only $300. But this is the 500. Okay, take the 300 and the 500 and put it in your business. Really? Yes. Come back another 12 months. Eight hundred dollars now have become fourteen hundred dollars. He said, "Okay, I see no you know. We are going to use it again. In five years, they had kids and in school. They, we were doing more for women than for guys. Because you give them man, that is when he thinks of a second wife. <laughs> That's when the wife at home does not know how to cook again. So the only thing I work with, we were giving to women. We were not giving to guys at all. I'm sorry." Because we believe for every woman you have, you have elevated the family. Yes. The kids go to school, they eat well, they have money to send to, to take their kids to the doctors. We were giving to women and we raised $50,000 a year from the U.S. and gave everything to women, one after the other. You give that someone to the, to the, to the wife and say, nah, you, you, I'm going to show you now I'm the, I'm the husband. Hey, money don't come. I go show you. You see that woman you don't want to see? Whether you like it or not, she's your second. We didn't do that. I wrote in the proposal, we got $50,000 from the UN, uh, United Nations. And I, I personally saw through the distribution of that money only to women. Because we realize when you help a woman, you have lifted the family. Amen. Kids can go to school. They can go to... People are no longer, children could not die of mosquito bite or malaria. So what is this woman, this guy would have done? Maybe I'm going to show this man that my ability has increased. My skills have increased. And if it comes away, well, you know what? You gave me one talent, I have three talents. Really? Go, you, the master will commit more to him as a testament of his coming of age and maturity in wisdom in everything. So this is the same attitude which you have about our lives. Today, as I mentioned, we look at some ways to live by choice, not by chance, taking charge of the opportunities 
you and I have been given. Primarily, this overwhelming opportunity. Let me tell you, the life that we live is overwhelming. And yet, it's also the overwhelming opportunities. When we come to this world, we come by the grace of God that when we have lived our time, when we have served God in our generation to leave footprints in the sand of times, that people will bless God that somebody passed through this life. That in your family, that people will bless God that you pass through that family. That in your place of work, we are ever you find yourself that God will be praised that somebody passed through there. We sang this morning, everywhere he went, he was doing good. Everywhere Jesus went, he was doing good. There was never, people were actually looking for the itinerary of Jesus. Before he gets here, there are crowds of people, sick people. 